Welcome to Perspectives El Paso. I'm Leon Blevins, Professor of Government at El Paso Community College. I'm going to put on my glasses so I can read something to you that is from my past. This is the last poll tax that I paid, and it was January 24th, 1966. Uh, I was only 29 years of age. This is um, October of 2010, and I just turned on October the 2nd, 73. It used to be that we had to pay to vote in El Paso County and throughout the Texas and throughout the South, for that matter. Now, the reason I'm telling this is because today I have a special guest that administers elections in El Paso County, and he's seen a lot of changes himself, but not nearly as many as I have seen. I'm going to ask my co-producer, Marco Lara, to weave these into the show as uh, he edits it. Uh, so I don't want to burden with you trying to show you on the camera right now. But uh, this is what it was. It asked uh, whether I was male or female, whether I was white or colored, asked for occupation, birthplace, whether I was native born or naturalized, and it cost a dollar and 75 cents. And we had to register every year in order to vote, and we had to register by the last day of January under the state law of Texas. And then that was done away with by an amendment to the U.S. Constitution. And then I have here the first registration that I did not have to pay for in order to vote. And I bought this, I didn't buy it, it was signed for on January the 19th, 1967. And uh, same things were listed that were before and anything else that was different. Oh, it asked for party affiliation. And I wrote on the line there, my party affiliation. And then I was purchasing some books at a, a used bookstore on Yandel Drive in El Paso one day. And I found this as a bookmarker. It's a 1937 printing of a poll tax. And it was purchased by Mr. J.W. Warden on January 31st, 1938. He lived on Elm Street, that's Five Points area. He was a plumber born in New Mexico. He was 55 years of age and he underlined his race colored. And that tells us something about Mr. Warden. So I want to interview today Javier Chacon and get him to talk a little bit about his role in elections in El Paso County. Javier, welcome to Perspectives El Paso. Thank you, President Bradley. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I knew your predecessor, Helen Jamison, because uh, my son Timothy and I used to be very involved in El Paso politics and would be delivering paperwork to her office from time to time. And um, as I remember reading about you, that you became her first assistant as uh, she was the administrator for the elections department and you were her first assistant. Is that correct? That's correct. I became her first assistant back in uh, January 1st of 2000. Okay. Are you a native El Pasoan? Yes, I am a native El Pasoan. I've lived here in uh, El Paso all my life. Okay. And which high school did you go to? I went to El Paso High School. Okay. Uh, class of 82. Class of 82. Oh, you are so young. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure some of these things were a bit of a surprise to you, weren't they? Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's very historical, uh, very nice to see. And um, we still have some of those on file, as a matter of fact. Okay. We see some of the uh, applications that we go through once in a while when we need to do some research that we do run into some uh, of these um, poll tags and some of the applications that are attached, all the history that when someone does a change of address or has moved out of the county and that we attach uh, all the information to one's individual record. Mm -hmm. uh, then we used to have to pay our poll tax at the tax assessor collector's office. And we did that for quite a long time. And then of course that was transitioned over to election offices within the counties of Texas. That's correct. Our office was one of the first offices that did that trans uh, transformation back in 1975. Mm -hmm. uh, we were the first county to have an elections administrator. All what the was that duties from the taxes as a collector and the county clerks were turned over to what is called now the El Paso County Elections Department. Now, what was your role as uh, an assistant to Helen Jamison? Uh, were, you, were you over several categories of your office and how they functioned? Or did you just have general assistance to her in whatever she needed done at that point? No, I was uh, actually in charge of overseeing the whole office and the production and the uh, work that would have to be done both for vote registration and the election process at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, overlooked um, mostly all the election process. 
uh, water registration also was handled by myself and Helen Jameson at the same time. How did you get into working in elections in the first place? It's a funny story. I like funny stories. <laughs> it was back in, um, as a matter of fact, March of 1985. I was um, working there temporary to go to school. And at the same time as Jameson uh, working in the building, offered me a full-time position and uh, attending night, sc uh, night school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been there since March of 18th of 1985. Well, you found your niche in life, right? I think so. I, it's, <laughs> it's like to say, yes, you find that niche and you stick with it. And I've stuck with it. And uh, uh, up to this point, I, I love what I do. I love my work. And it's uh, very gratifying to see the hard work that you, you put into something that you really love. I, I like to talk about relationships with other agencies of government, local, state, national, in fact. And I'm sure you have a lot of these relationships you have to deal with. Let's start with the uh, political parties. What is your relationship in the elections office with political parties, specifically with regard to primary elections? It's a, it's a good relationship that we have to establish with both parties. We have to work with both parties. We have to see eye to eye on mostly everything because we do conduct all their elections. Even though they're the authority of the election, we conduct their elections. So our relationship with, with them has to be uh, very upfront. We gotta be in sync. We gotta get all the judges and clerks aligned in order so it can function on election day. Wow, and people want it to function properly on election day. That's correct. And, and you hear if it isn't functioning oh, properly. Oh, believe me, we'll hear about it <laughs> right away. And it's fine, no, I understand the, the, the public you know, uh, and their concerns, and uh, we wanna make sure that everything is um, fair, right. ethical, and most of all, fair service to everybody. Okay, let's talk about some relationships with other institutions, uh, such as the county in relationship to the state government, and then in relationship to the national government? Uh, we are in, uh, with the state. We uh, constantly deal with the state every day. Uh, a lot of transitions have happened over the years. Uh, just for an example, for a voter registration card now, once we process a voter registration card, we have to deal both with the Social Security Administration as well as the DPS for verifying either your Social Security number or your Texas driver license number or your Texas ID number that goes through a live check every day that we submit the, that information for that voter to be eligible to vote. Well, that must mean significant computer work. Did you help install the computer systems uh, that are being used today? Yes, I have. I've been uh, mostly forming all the foundation to all the transitions that's happened over the years in the election department from, as you can see from the punch card to electronic voting, uh, through even now with the DPS that we have what we call a wire trans uh, transformation every day that w we used to get um, hard, co hard copies of voter registration through the DPS but now that transition is through live wire or what we call the live wire um, real-time activity going right on. and uh, that's done on a daily basis uh, don't you conduct some elections for other entities in El Paso County Oh, yes, we do. We conduct all the elections for El Paso County. That meaning from school districts, water districts, small municipalities like Horizon City, City of Clint, you know, City of Anthony, all the small entities that govern within El Paso County. Uh, if you hear some knocking, what is happening? There's construction going on just above our studio on the roof of the building at El Paso Community College. But we're not going to let that stop us. Of because not. if you can deal with the major problems of election snafus, we can deal with a little bit of background noise. That is correct. I don't <laughs> have a problem with that. Uh, you said, did, did, you, did I hear you say you do elections for UTEP? We used or to. Or did I read that? Uh, we used to handle UTEPs for homecoming president a uh, couple of years back. but. Uh, of course, you know, they stopped doing that. They, start, they stopped asking the services from us. So uh, they took over that and they, they run their own elections. But there was a while back and- I Well, I thought that was strange when I read that, that they would- Yeah, it, it, was, yeah it was in the mid nineties, I think. Mm -hmm. In the mid nineties that they would um, let us know if we you know, could help them conduct their elections at UTIP. And uh, we did apply with them. We, we helped them out. We made, made sure we oversee those elections. 
Uh, but uh, as of late, they've been handling their own elections. Right. Uh, tell me about your staff. You can't do all of this job by yourself. Oh, no. What I, size uh, staff do you have? And tell me about how you have them structured. Uh, we have a staff of 14, including myself. No, uh, first of all, let me say I want to thank my staff because they are tremendous hard workers. And like you say, without them, nothing would get done. And my st from the top of the, uh, my administration, I have my assistant. I have my elections coordinator, my training coordinator. I got my voter registration um, clerks. I got my uh, administrative assistant. I got my GIS specialist and uh, a training coordinator as well. And uh, also, all the, the people that are in my office permanent, they wear many hats. Uh, from one day to the next, they can become a central count judge, a uh, supervisor of tabulating uh, results. So we are divided in, into a lot of different areas besides what our titles are put on our uh, for employment. Well, just this past week, I've been dealing with elections in my Texas government class and my American government classes. And the very common question I'm asked once I'm showing them the voter registration certificate and all that, is they'll say, how do I know where I'm supposed to vote? And I say, look in the blue pages in the El Paso telephone directory and look under elections department and call. Or if I have my shirt with a pocket in it, I pull out my pocket calendar and I give them a number. Why don't you give them a number? Sure. First of all, our phone number is 546-2154. Or they can go to our webpage, epcounty.com elections. And uh, if you would like to register to vote, there's some forms there that you can download if uh, a student or anybody that's outside the county of El Paso and would like to vote by mail. Also, we have the applications there and uh, everything is very self-explanable. Uh, we have sample ballots like for the upcoming election on November 2nd. You can go to our webpage and we have sample ballots. We have the early voting sites, we have the mobile sites, and we have the polling locations for all the Paso County. Aren't you frustrated like I am that we don't have a bigger voter turnout than we have in all these elections? Oh, definitely. Uh, a lot of hard work is put into these elections. And uh, we try to make sure that we motivate uh, the county of El Paso and all these registered voters to make sure that they're aware that we're having elections where they can go vote. And uh, hopefully, you know, we're going to try harder to make sure that El Paso is aware that when we have elections that we're out there and we're there to serve them. How do you reach out to get people to work in the elections? Do you find that difficult to get people to work in some of these polling places? Oh, it's very difficult. You know, that's why we are, are line ourselves. That's another duty that we share with the parties. And we have to work together in that aspect to make sure that we find all the eligible people that are eligible to vote for us, to work for us, I'm sorry. And uh, it is a big task. You know, a lot of my staff puts a lot of hard work into that as well. You know, my administrative assistant uh, handles most of all are hiring our our election day workers as well as both parties and it takes several months just to make sure we align everybody and that everybody is properly staffed for election day as well as for early voting well the biggest turnout of course is in presidential election tell me what's going on downtown in your office with your staff when the returns start coming in on presidential election night well it gets kind of chaotic there for, for a while but no we take it all in stride now you know a lot of my employees have been with me for a long time and, and I thank them all for that uh, but uh, we do have a lot of um, workers we, we hire approximately three to five hundred people for one day on Central Count Station and on election day we hire approximately around 1300 people to man the polls so it's massive you know to hire and make sure that everybody's properly trained as well so, but on election night, we have the procedures down. Uh, all the judges and all the clerks are aware uh, of the procedure, what they have to follow when they come down to Central Count Station. So if someone's interested in doing that, they call that number you gave us on the screen? Oh, most definitely. If they're interested in working and they meet the qualifications, most definitely they can call 546-2154. We're always looking for uh, people that are interested and, and that are willing to work for the election department. My son Timothy is, is fixing to start working the early voting in an election on the east side. Uh, tell us about the difference between early voting and a regular voting date. Early voting has become very popular in the last couple of years. Uh, reason being is uh, 
for, for instance, let's take this election that's coming up November 2nd. We would have approximately 21 sites of early voting. In those sites, anybody who's eligible to vote and has met the deadlines is eligible to vote for that particular election. And the beauty of it is you can walk up, show your identification or your voter certificate, and they'll process you. And does it mean that you have to go vote on election day in your precinct? Election day, that's the difference. On election day, you have to go to your precinct. In other words, if you're in the east side and your precinct's on the west side, you have to go to the west side in, in order to vote on election day. Now, if you have moved from one precinct to another, say across town, right. how much time do you have to change your voting location by an official registration form? Okay, that takes also, like everything else, 30 days prior to election. And oh, that's okay. one of the laws that's, I think, legislator passed in the last, you know, a couple, not a couple of years, but it's been in, in effect for a couple of years. But that's what it is now that 30 days prior to election, you can either register or do a change of address as long as it's 30 days prior to any election. Do you ever get involved in any of these arguments about whether a candidate is living in the appropriate address when they're running for office? Does that ever come up to your office? Yes, it does, but uh, we cannot get involved in situations like that. You just give them basic information. The basic information, when they did their change, when they registered to vote, that is open to the public on the Public Information Act, and we can release that information when someone registered or when they did their change of address. Now, you said there's some fairly recent changes with regard to the federal laws and, and the records and reporting you're supposed to be doing. Are there any recommendations you would make? If you could talk to, uh, say, the Secretary of State in Austin, uh, and, and, un and a lot of people aren't aware that most of these elections in our country are state and local elections. They're not run by the national government. Right. A lot of suggestions, we do have an association which we meet like twice a year. And um, this association gathers a lot of information of uh, the 254 counties that we do have here in the state of Texas. And we brainstorm a lot of the situations that we go through and we put them towards our Secretary of State and try to do some changes to better uh, the effects of when you go to, to the election process. And a lot of them, might be uh, like one, what, like something that we're looking at now is why don't we change the Tuesday elections and make sure it's a holiday, you know, make sure we, so when we go to any schools or any other public building that we have enough access to it, that there's no interference with nobody else but the election process or move them to Saturdays. There's a lot of brainstorming that we're, we're doing as an association to make sure we bring this across from not only the federal level, but also on the state level. Uh, we deal with even from changing laws, meaning you know, us in the border might be a little bit different from someone living in, 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 in the middle of Texas. So we got to make sure that our, all the border counties get together and make sure that our concerns are met as well. So you actually lobby government for some of these changes? Definitely, we do, because we've we got to make sure that we're represented well and, and that the process is fair to everybody. Let's talk about you working with our state delegation that goes to Austin, state senators, state representatives. Uh, I'm sure they're willing to come in and sit down with you and, and talk about what you'd like to see pushed well, through as legislation. Oh, definitely. Uh, and that's why we, we meet with them, we talk to them, and uh, we make sure you know, our concerns are heard. And that's why this uh, association that we have was created. Mm -hmm to make sure that we make sure we get our points across, not only to each of our senators or rep state representatives, but as well as the Secretary of State, here's our concerns and they help us push forward the best possible ways to run elections. Right. Uh, let's talk about you drawing in others to do this sort of work. I'm sure you've drawn in some young people, you've gone and met people at different locations, and you say, look, I started as a novice in this and I learned on the job and here I am now administrator. Tell me about meeting some people that maybe are working for you now. I have met a lot of young people and uh, they're surprised sometimes that it's what I've gone through to her um, at the point that I am right now and the hard work that it took to get there. Mm -hmm. But I encourage them to stick with it. I encourage them you know, to make sure to find that niche in life that they want to do. And I, I you know, they ask a lot of questions. One of the questions is, well, what does the elections department do? So they just conduct elections. And when I sit down and, and talk to them and they have the time, 
they're very surprised of all the work that goes in just to a preparation yeah, right. for an election. And they see the whole different point of view from it. And that's when I encourage them to make sure to participate and vote and to take a friend with them as well or their brother, their cousin, their mother, their dad. You know, because it's very important that we show the support, not only here in county, but in state and federal levels that, you know, we're trying our best to make sure that we get across the vote process and to make sure they get out to the polls and exercise that right that they have. Now, let's get a real touchy situation here. Okay. We're in an economic recession. We're seeing that the county commissioner's court is having to cut budgets. Uh, you're requesting money. We see population growth. You need more workers. Uh, tell me about your relationship in dealing with those that are on county commissioner's court, the county judge and the commissioners themselves with regard to your budget. They've been very supportive. They see that the election process is needed and it's one of our rights. But yes, we, we have difficult times, but we seem to always work things out properly and to make sure that the voting process doesn't get affected by it. But yes, there's some hard times and I know sometimes I get up there and I, 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 like I said, I make sure my department is well staffed and that we have everything that we need, not what we want, but what we need to make sure that we're efficient at what we're doing. You know, and that's part of county government that makes sure that we try to run the lean budget, but sometimes, you know, it's very hard and you gotta do that extra hard work just to make sure that we help the county also end their financial trouble or financial problems that we have there or, or the, the economy that way it is right now. Yeah. So but you're not sitting on the edge of where you would have to lay anyone off this close to an election. <laughs> oh no, thank <laughs> God. You know, right now we're 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 we're, we're one um we're one um, employee short, oh, one, okay. which makes a world of difference, believe me. Sure. And that's something that I am right now, hopefully trying to get back, but I know times are hard. Uh, so that's why I, I like to thank my staff because they picked up a lot of the other duties that this individual would take and spread them through all our remainder of my employees. Right. You know, so it's very hard right now, but um, we're trying to help as much as what we can to help the county you know, meet also their uh, in this uh, tough, hard times of economics. Right. What do you tell people in general when you're talking to them about the American electoral system and representation? Uh, you're in part of this election. This is what America's about, isn't it? You said a right to vote. Right. It's, it's, you know, I tell them, you know what, it might be a right, but consider it as something like a privilege. Other countries wait days in lines to vote. And here we sometimes don't exercise that right to vote. Mm -hmm. We forget about it or we don't have time for it. Uh, it seems that everybody's these days is too busy just to take a little bit of time to go and vote. So and those, you know, to answer that is I try to encourage them. Just take five to 15 minutes of your time to go and vote. You know, we just had a naturalization ceremony here in El Paso, Texas. I'm sure you hear sometimes people coming up to you and saying, I just became a citizen and now I can vote. That's correct. And we attend uh, some of those um, seminars or naturalization uh, groups to make sure once they become uh, citizens, United States citizens, that they apply right away to register. Oh, you're vote. right there right in line. As soon as they <laughs> That's get <that> right. <laughs> fill this out. <laughs> yes, we are. And uh, we have a lot of, also a lot of support from other organizations that help us out sometimes when election time comes around and sometimes on the demand and the staff that I have sometimes it's impossible for us to get out there so I want to thank those groups for helping us as well for being out there and helping the process I really want to thank them too. Well, there's veterans groups, seniors groups, a variety That's correct. of groups that are out there getting people registered to vote. That's correct. And, and you have registration voter drives. Yes I do. We uh, we like to attend those. We can go out in evenings, weekends, um, to either church, you know, mass, right after mass, we're out there trying to get people to register to vote. We go to a UTEP community college, uh, try to where more people are, are gonna be there at one time uh, and to make sure we pass the word that, you know, register, but also participate and vote. And another very important segment of relationships is the media. Most Electronic definitely. print media, you get your message out there. Right, definitely. I, and I have a good relationship with the media, I think. Um, I, I keep them uh, abreast of everything else, what they're doing, uh, what we're doing. And um, I try to make sure that everything gets published, like when early voting starts, uh, when the 
on election day that the uh, polling locations get published and also uh, on, on the news on media to make sure that they run ads you know that early voting has started try to make as much as possible as what airtime they can give me as well well I think I'm interviewing today one of the greatest jugglers in El Paso County <laughs> thank you for that. you have a <laughs> tremendous job to juggle all of these things and get us out to vote and I just wish we had more people turning out to vote. It's easier to get people registered to vote than to get them to turn out to vote. Oh, that's definitely, that's something we're, we're, we're um, telling them, yes, register them to vote, never stop that. But my motto is, get them out to vote. You know, most of the people, we have approximately 780,000 people living here in El Paso County, and we have approximately 380,000 registered voters. Wow. So I'm telling them, please do not stop what you're doing and registering people but please pass the word along to get the people out and vote and participate. Our time is almost gone. We're right down here to the last minute or so. And we do want to apologize for the background noise we've had today. Remember, this is October and we're headed toward Halloween. And I think we have gremlins working in this particular <laughs> building. <laughs> and our crew has done the very best that they could with what we have today. And you've been an excellent guest. Thanks for coming and being with us. Thank you, Professor. On Professor. Perspective Pleasure to be El here. Paso. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Javier. And that's another program. And we hope that you'll tune in for the next one.